All right, good afternoon. I'll call to order this February 12th, 2019 workshop of the Powhatan County School Board. Ms. Wilson, if you let the minutes reflect that all members of the school board are present this evening along with Dr. Jones and our student liaison, Ms. Winnell. Uh, that takes us to the agenda for the workshop. Is there any necessary changes, additions, revisions to the draft agenda presented for this workshop? Do any members have changes? Is there a motion to accept the draft agenda as presented? So moved. Have a motion. Is there a second? Second. I have a motion is second. All in favor of approving the draft agenda, please respond with aye. 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 Any opposed? <clears throat> motion carries 5-0. It takes us to our first public comment period or our public comment period for our workshop. This is an opportunity for individuals or delegations wishing to speak to the board to come forward and be heard. There's a time limit of three minutes per individual and five minutes per group with a 30 minute <coughs> total time limit. Uh, we would ask the speaker to identify themselves, provide us with their address, and also to address their comments to the board as a whole, not to individual board members. Public comment period is open. Once again, public comment period is open. All right, seeing no movement, I'll bring public comment period to a close. Dr. Jones, I believe our first, uh, you have two presentations for us this evening. Yes, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, first um, presentation is our first uh, pass at our 2019-2020 budget. Uh, I'm going to tag team this presentation with Dr. Mahundro and Mr. Johns. Um, but we're, um, this is the latest information that we have, um, or we had as of Thursday afternoon when we posted it. There's a few updates that we'll give you verbally and then um, change that information for our next budget presentation. But uh, we feel good about where we are right now. Um, and certainly there's still some work to be done at the state level that will impact our budget as well as some choices that um, the board will uh, be making um, as we finalize the budget from the point that we're at right now. So let Dr. Amahundro get us started. Good evening. Each year as we get ready for the budget presentation, we recap some of the things that have been impacted by the previous year's budget. And so the first thing I want to start with was a pretty major year that we had last year um, with some significant accomplishments. We developed a brand new strategic plan that will guide these budget discussions as well as everything else that we do over the next five years. We had a successful elementary realignment uh, that allowed us to maximize um, the use of our facilities as well as combine our fifth grade with our K through four schools and allow for our sixth through eight middle school. Of course, we opened the brand new Powhatan Middle School. We completed the joint transportation facility. We also rolled out a successful middle school Chromebook one-to-one -one initiative and were accredited again this year. So those were our big accomplishments for the year. In this, these next few slides, I'm going to use our new strategic plan to talk about how the budget has imp impacted the last year. And so the first component of our strategic plan is to make sure that we are addressing personalized learning by creating pathways for each of our students. And these are just a few of the examples. And these are fresh examples from this past school year. So we certainly have other things that we continue to do within our classrooms, on our fields, in our extracurricular activities, but these are just a few of the things uh, that reflect the personalized learning we provide for our students. So several new courses that we rolled out this past year. At the secondary level, we had an English 12 and U.S. government hybrid course, a launch capstone course, an engineering course, and at the secondary level, both at middle and high, we're using Project Lead the Way for some of our CTE programming. Under VTSS, we full, fully implemented that at all levels, and we've used technology to help us implement that program. From an assessment standpoint, we expanded our performance assessments in secondary and had core common assessments in our uh, core areas at the high school. In the arts, we continue with our excellence in the arts, VBOD honor band, and a blue ribbon school for our music ed program. In athletics, you can see the range of championships we've had, whether it's region or conference or students, individual students getting all state honors. And then with extracurriculars, we continue to shine there as well in our robotics program, our future problem solving program, and Skills USA, which is a CTE program. In the area of leveraging talent for our teachers and our, our students, uh, we had a successful convocation this fall at our new opening of our middle school. We also <laughs> conducted a curriculum close-up utilizing the Junior Achievement Building. Um, and we had all of our administrators and our instructional team participating in that. We 
have a new program called the ABCs of PCPS, which is dedicated to uh, mentoring our new teachers and making sure that they are on board with the things that are specific to what we do here in Powhatan County. We added a few positions in the math coach, the STEM instructor, so that we can fully utilize the innovation lab at the middle school. PD was expanded at the middle school. Also, we have teacher choice for our DL421 instructional framework. We also, in order to make sure that we are providing services for our teachers, we have uh, expanded our YMCA partnership and where we've been able to provide opportunities for teachers to transport their students if they have students within the county and they teach in another location. The YMCA is actually allowing us to use their program for our middle school teachers at the adjacent Powhatan Elementary School and that's a nice benefit for our teachers. We had several outstanding teachers receive awards and there's those um, three of those are listed on the right hand side there. In the area of investing in our community and engaging our community, community to facilitate more meaningful learning experiences, we had a partner in the arts grant where our elementary students at Flat Rock told our story of Powhatan County. We have partnered with Dominion and we expanded our equity and diversity committee this year. We continue our summer reading um, passport to literacy program. We've got virtual job shadowing that's happening with our students with disabilities. We expanded fire, or we initiated a firefighting program in partnership with Powhatan Fire and Rescue. We had our community day of service for our ninth graders. Seesaw is a new technology program that we utilize for uh, student learning and parent communication, and we're using a new online form sharing program for our parents as well. In the area of culture and well-being, we continue some partnerships, or we've expanded some partnerships with Cameron K. Gallagher Foundation for Mindfulness, Virginia Center for Inclusive Communities for Diversity and Equity, and a new program with Powhatan Free Clinic uh, called the Powhatan Wellness Cooperative for our um, social emotional wellness for our high school students. We initiated the second step program at the middle school, PBIS at the high school, and small groups in all of our counseling departments K through 12. One of the benefits of the strong budget that you, that you all provide for us each year is that we are able to maintain average class sizes that are conducive for student learning. You can see here are examples of each of the class sizes for all of the core areas at the secondary, that's at the top, as well as the electives, and that we are in line with, for the most part, what we have had year over year. At the bottom, you can see the examples of our elementary school enrollments by grade level. Certainly at times those vary from grade level to grade level because of staffing, um, but we do work to make sure that our class average size is 21 overall at all of our schools. And then finally, um, the budget is implica is, has implications based on student enrollment. We have been fairly flat over the past five or six years, and this is just where we are with enrollment over the past few years, as well as our projected enrollment for 1920, which is 4298. Any questions for Dr. Amahandro before she leaves the podium? <coughs> Thank you, Mr. Johns. Yes, sir. Um, and just to add to the um, enrollment number, uh, this number is basically our September 30 child count number. It is different from our average daily membership number. The enrollment number is used to uh, budget and estimated expenses uh, for uh, supplies at the school level and staffing. Our ADM number is what we use for uh, budgeting revenues. Um, and this is our uh, per pupil cost uh, comparison but for how we're doing in Powhatan versus uh, how we compare with the rest of the state. And you can see uh, over these years that uh, our, um, even though we're providing a very quality, uh, high quality education, the cost for that education is consistently uh, less than the state average. Um, we're running uh, anywhere from $1,100 to almost $1,500 less per student uh, than the um, state average. This chart goes through 2017, um, which is the latest published data. 
uh, the fiscal year that we just ended, FY18, uh, back in June, that data will not be published by the state until April. Uh, but we will update this chart once we have that information. Mr. Johnson, can we ask you some questions as you move through it? Yes, Would sir. that be okay? All right, and I, I have one at this point. So while, while our increases are, are certainly tracking the state increases looking at the graph, mm -hmm. what do you attribute our increases to? What's driving the per pupil cost up in general terms? Um, well, anytime uh, we have increased expenses, whether it be uh, increased uh, like health insurance or increased salary adjustments, um, con additional contracts and things like that, they're going to drive that up. I would say most of it is probably salary and benefits. I, I would agree completely. So it's personnel costs? Right. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. um, this is just a comparison of our uh, fixed and uh, variable cost. And uh, as you can see, and to comment on uh, the payroll and benefits, you can see that payroll and benefits is the largest percent um, of our budget. A payroll obviously is uh, a pay for all employee types to include uh, substitutes and any stipend pays and things like that. The benefits include Social Security, um, Medicare, uh, VRS retirement, group life, health insurance, um, as well as uh, disability insurance, unemployment, and workers' comp. The fixed plant operations includes uh, utilities such as electricity, heat and oil, uh, water, telephone. Um, it includes the uh, maintenance contracts such as service solutions, landscape, trash disposal, uh, things like that, uh, as well as the maintenance supplies and repair parts that our uh, maintenance staff needs to keep our facilities uh, running uh, and uh, also the insurance uh, for our facilities. The uh, fixed instruction and vehicle area includes um, the instructional contracts that we have. Uh, it includes our payments for the school resource officers, uh, instructional tuitions, um, uh, for example, Maggie Walker and uh, the Appomattox Governor's School, Code RVA, uh, legal fees, uh, postage, equipment leases uh, for copiers and postage machines, things like that, as well as uh, uh, vehicle fuels and uh, software and the licenses for all the instructional programs. The variable cost is everything else, which is a very small amount, the things that we actually may have some flexibility in. And those would be office and school supplies, subscriptions, textbooks, dues and memberships of travel, uh, and equipment purchases, those type of things. And you can see that's a very small percent. All right, so let me ask you a question about this one, okay? So your fixed plan operations, I note that, that it's actually lower <coughs> during 18-19 than the 17-18. So is that I guess I was expecting to see that number a little higher with the addition of the new school last year. Well, was this is the 1819 uh, budget, right? And it is budget, not actual cost. Okay. And uh, you know, some of those estimates and actual cost are a little bit more. But uh, we also closed the school, right. so that's kind of offsetting so, uh, a little bit of okay. that. Okay. So, and I, and I follow you that they're estimates, but. So we're even with even with that. What, do your estimates track what your actual, or are they close to what your actual expenditures are at this <coughs> point? Do you think? Um, they do, okay. and, and of course, we always spend less than the appropriation, and the budget is, you know, the full appropriation. Uh, and you can see the 17-18 year is actual dollars, and so the 18-19 is what we have budgeted. Okay. Uh, at the end of this fiscal year, um, while these percentages may change a little bit, um, it, you know, they, um, we're not going to spend the $47,720,000 uh, because um, we have to stay under the appropriation. Okay. But Thank I, you, sir. Mr. Dr. John. Yeah, I'm sorry. I think um, the chairman has a good point, though. I think we did increase in this upcoming budget electricity costs because of some additional costs with the new middle school. For the FY20, for, 20, for, 20, for FY20, yeah. we are increasing uh, two big areas that are 
uh, causing the line item increase is the uh, utility costs for the Powhatan metal because they are more than what uh, Pocahontas metal was. And then our fuel costs are for um, uh, heating oil, uh, gas, and diesel is going to be is more this year than we had estimated. So we're increasing that for FY20. So we are right. seeing Thank those you. changes. Appreciate that. Yep. Any other questions on that slide? Any other questions? All right, thank you, sir. Uh, okay, now to uh, talk about the big picture of where we are on uh, revenue expenditures. Um, the uh, governor's budget proposes that state revenues will increase uh, just over a million dollars. Uh, the locality uh, has uh, provided us a increase uh, estimate of $301,000. Federal and local revenues are changing a little bit, but for the most part, they are uh, neutral. Uh, so our total revenue increase at this time in the first draft is $1,347,300. When you look on the expenditure side, um, even though the governor's budget is proposed a 5% increase and the Senate and the House have also, there's flexibility in the uh, appropriation language, or there will be because they have always had it, to where localities that gave an increase in this fiscal year uh, when there was not an incentive to do so can use that increase. So for us it's 2 percent, and so we've only estimated the 3 percent for FY20 to get to the 5, and that's 993,000. Um, there's some additional positions uh, for uh, school and departments three additional positions and a few additional stipends. That's 193000 Our initial estimate for health insurance was a 1.4 percent increase, which would have been 55000 uh, Did get word um, this week, just a couple of days ago, that um, yesterday, or Friday, that it is uh, <coughs> going to be 1.8, so that's an additional 16000 So we're looking at 71000 instead of fifty one. So at this point in time in the first draft, we were out of balance at about $119,000. If you add the additional 16 for health insurance, that's 135,000 out of balance in that our uh, identified uh, expenses are less than the projected revenues. We also did get um, issued late Friday afternoon the uh, House and Senate uh, proposed budgets. Um, under the House budget, we would receive $37,000 less than what the governor's proposed, and under the Senate budget, we would receive $131,000 less than what the governor's proposed. So at this point in time, our range, out of balance range, uh, based upon the um, House version is 172, Senate version is 266. So we have a little bit more work to do. Uh, and the uh, staff um, will be working uh, to bring a balanced budget back to the board uh, at the next meeting on February 26. And so, um, Excuse me. Can I? Any questions um, about those numbers? Yes, I, I got really excited when I first heard it was going to be 5%. And um, I'd like to know. Um, so how come we're not getting a whole 5% this year? I mean, how come they do that half and half thing? How come, what is, what is, um, like, so, all right, So all, on. yep, good question. So um, the money that we receive from the state only covers SOQ required positions, which is about 60% of our positions. It's only 60%. Right. Right. So when the state says they're giving you a 5% raise, what they're really doing is giving you 60% of a 5% raise. And, and that 60% is only for part of your positions. Right. It's not all of your positions. Right. Okay. See, this is what's very, you know, as far as public relations go, it looks like that we're forever giving our staff and teachers, employees, all these raises, mm -hmm. and in reality, we're not. I mean, 
Well, we'll we will be giving, hopefully, um, our goal would be to give 5 percent over the biennium over the two years, which is what the governor's language actually says. Mm -hmm. Now, what was, you know, reported on the news and in the newspaper is 5 percent without the details of it. But what his budget actually said was 5 percent over this biennium. So remember, we gave 2 percent last year plus some targeted increases. So a lot of our employees, especially most of our teachers, got more than 2 percent. Um, so they'll be getting more than 5 percent over these, these two years if we're able to, to reach this goal. But yeah, it is, it is misleading and it mm -hmm. certainly sends a message to our staff and to the community that we're giving this 5 percent raise when in actuality we're not proposing mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. um, and I've had a meeting last um, week with the 12 school divisions in Region 1. Nobody's doing 5 percent. Everybody's mm -hmm. looking at about 3 percent. Um, I've talked to the county. They're looking at 3% as well. So that mm -hmm. seems to be where everybody's landed to, again, balance it with what was done last year. So what would happen if a county did not have enough money to give it the 5% between the two, two years? You wouldn't be able to access that state money. You have to certify that you have met that threshold in order to draw down that state money. So, so if you don't have the money from the locality or within the school's budget itself through an, a reallocation, then you don't get that money. And has that ever happened? Do um, you know? There are, oh. so that has happened with some school divisions in Virginia, yes, yep. ma'am. And has it ever happened to us? I know that it's ever happened to us. Not, no. not okay. since I've been here. Right. I can't well, speak from uh, prior okay. to that. Well, thank you. I appreciate you explaining that. Yep, absolutely. Uh, Mr. Mr. Chairman, Mr. just follow up on that. Mr. Cole. And I, then Mr. Cole. I think that the staff, and I'm in agreement with Ms. Emil, that, uh, you know, that the staff here is 5 percent, and they apply that to this year. Mm -hmm. And they get very disappointed when, you know, they hear the whole story and it's 5 percent over, over two years. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know how we can do a better job of communicating that, but, uh, you know, people tend to hear what, what sounds best to them. And uh, I think there's a lot of disappointment when, when the truth finally, you know, hits. So. We just have to be careful of how we how we state that and caution everybody from the get-go mm -hmm. what, what the real picture is. And I, you know, when we had our TAC meeting in January, right after the 5% came out, I made sure to tell staff that that's 5% over the biennium, and it may not be 5% this year. We don't have the numbers at this point. It may be 3% uh, tacked on to the 2% that we had. So we have tried to keep our staff in, up to date on, on what we th think is feasible from a budgetary standpoint based on the amount of money we're getting from the state. It's a good uh, point. Information sharing is critical. Mm -hmm. Mr. Cole, you had a, Mr. Johns, did you want to add something further before uh, Mr. Cole's question? Uh, yes, sir, I did. And that is to help staff understand and so forth. Um, when the governor came out and proposed to 5%, included in his proposed budget was $700,000 incentive for that 5%. Our cost for a 5% is $1,655,000. That highlights that fact that the state's only paying their identified share of SOQ positions. And so, uh, you know, if we were to really do five this year, then, you know, that's another million dollars that you have to add uh, to the state 700,000. That's a million dollars the locality has to come up with. That's but important. but also, as Dr. Jones mentioned, that's over the biennium. They're just talking about it now in the second year of the biennium. We did give two, so our employees hopefully will receive five. All right, thank you. Mr. Cole, you had a comment or question? That was a question, and you, right, you answered it for me. You said the state has given us $700,000 towards a raise that's going to cost us one point how many million? Well, the... The, a 5% raise on our current employees is $1,655,000. Um, however, you know, the definition of that five is over the biennium. We've given two, so we only have to give three. And so the cost of three is that $993,000 number. I think the question is if we gave 5% this year or in 1920, it would cost us $1.65 million so we'd be at a million so, delta so even in even using two percent last year we're still two hundred fifty thousand dollars short basically yes sir two hundred more than that two hundred ninety thousand mm -hmm. dollars short of what would, would it cost to cover the race you know and, and I, I think 
you know, because you know, I want to know the same, the, the same information, and I'm, 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 I'm a little bit glad to hear Dr. Jones say that most divisions are doing the same thing, because I was very worried that somebody was going to come out and say we're going to give our employees five percent. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I'm old enough to remember years and years ago when the governor said we're going to give them ten percent, and it was ten percent that we got for three years in a row. We were pretty mm -hmm. pathetic at that point, but that, that's. That's not the way it works in today's budget language, unfortunately. The other thing I think that teachers need to be aware of is that the, the total percentage of our payroll in terms of what it cost out of our budget has gone up every year that I can remember being on the board. I don't know what it was three or four years ago, but this year it's going from 59% to almost going up one full percentage point mm -hmm. of what our total budget yep. is. So I think that's an important piece of information for people to know is that we are tapping out and taking more and more money away from other things in our total budget to devote to payroll every year and, and it's it's necessary I'm not complaining about it but I think people need to look to see how that has impacted their budget over the last five or ten years in terms of what we're <coughs> spend, spending and, and to uh, Mr. Walter's question a minute ago about what that increase has been driven by I would you know, and a few per, per people cost, yeah. and I would say that, that it's probably 95% or more yeah. driven by, by, by teacher salary, well, not all teacher salaries, just personnel salaries cost. and pe personnel yeah. costs in general. I mean, what was it two years ago, we had a, almost a million dollars in BRS that we had to right. tackle. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, you know, so, yeah. Healthcare increases last year and mm -hmm. previous years as well. <clears throat> That, that was my question, and, and, and it's interesting that all of us are thinking kind yeah. of the same yeah. things and the same pieces of information. And, and I'll be sending a, um, a communication out to staff, to all staff tomorrow after the um, budget presentation today. I'll include the budget presentation, but I'll also include some of this language um, so that they can see it in writing and um, have an understanding of why we're pr proposing what we are and what some of the challenges are um, versus what is being presented um, in the media and, and elsewhere by the governor's office. Well, the Commonwealth's media relations office does a good job of promoting their own mm -hmm. yeah, they do. their they own do. slant on things. Yeah, right. They do. Mm -hmm. And Mr. Cole, if I could add to your uh, comments and question about uh, payroll increasing uh, over the uh, over the years, our line item totals have decreased. This budget mm -hmm. for FY20. Uh, proposes our total line items to be about seven million six hundred seventy thousand. Just a few years ago, they were it was over eight uh, million, eight point one and eight point two million. So we've had this shift uh, and have had to to balance our budget. And so that just uh, you know reinforces what you said about the payroll cost and benefit cost increasing. Maybe we could get up one Emel. of our um, one of our class like the ABCs of in, in, in yep. language that not only the staff understands, but the public too, that we could put in, ask to put in the newspaper. Okay, can we work on that? All right, Mr. <coughs> Mr. Jones, I just have, I guess, one request, and I think you've been presenting this in a similar fashion now for a couple of years. Yes, sir. Could you go back and just pull for us what percentage of the, pay, what percentage the payroll and payroll benefits represent in our budget for maybe the past couple of years and just put it into, into a single document? Sure. Sure, I can. Okay. Thank uh, you, sir. So I can put some line graphs together to show you that shift, too, that I talked about. That would be good. Thank mm -hmm. you, sir. Not a problem. So the last slide um, is kind of where we are with our budget priorities, and I'll take that slide. Um, we've tied each of these to our strategic plan um, goals. Uh, it was conversations that we had in, in making the budget, is making sure that we tie back into um, the strategic plan goal. Um, first one and the first priority that the board um, settled on at our budget workshop back in the fall was um, increased salary for our employees. So we have. Um, included that. That's the largest increase in our budget, the 3% salary increase for all employees. We also have, um, I've had several conversations with Sheriff Nunnally, um, and um, school safety has been a, a hot topic, obviously. Last spring, we got word about um, some incidents and some concerns from the community well after the budget had been approved last year. Um, so I'm happy to report that Sheriff Nunley is including an extra 
um, school resource officer in his budget because um, that's covered under the sheriff's budget. He has asked for us to increase our contribution. We have $40,000 in the budget that's been $40,000 in the budget for a number of years that basically offsets the cost of um, sheriff's deputies working after school events for overtime and those types of things. Um, he's asked us to in increase that to 80000 What we have in this first pass of the budget is 65000 And what he hopes to use that extra money for is to pull um, and to compensate um, deputies to be in our elementary schools part-time, not full-time, but to be there at hot hours, opening of the school day, lunchtime, when there are um, public events going on at the end of the school day. So he has formulated a plan, and he said he'd be happy to come to a future board meeting and explain exactly what he's thinking, where he would pay officers who are um, off duty to come in. They would have some training about being um, or in schools, but they would be visible presence at the <coughs> elementary schools where we don't have as much presence now. And mm -hmm. hopefully that would be something that the community uh, would respond well to and I think would be a step in the right direction. We'd also have that extra resource officer if it's approved by the county budget that could float between the elementary schools as well. So what our conversations have been is between those two items, we think that we could almost have full coverage at our elementary schools as well as what we currently have at our middle and our high school. So that's where we are with that topic. Um, and we're going to work to, as we work on this budget, to get it up to that $80,000 increase if we're at all able to and still meet our other priorities, as uh, Sheriff Nunley has requested. Um, the next goal, um, and one that we've heard from our elementary teachers, is to increase touch access technology, um, whether it's iPads, Chromebooks, or another type of tablet uh, for our primary grades, for K2, for those students who may not have the manual dexterity to operate a keyboard. Uh, so we're testing a few different items right now. Um, Jeff Durrett's department has given them to some teachers who are piloting them. Uh, we're getting feedback on them and our goal is to have we have money in the budget that we would be able to purchase some additional of those devices um, for our k2 teachers and students um, we would have in the goal of personalized learning one fte would be for an additional preschool classroom um, that is our inclusion classrooms over at flat rock elementary we have increased enrollment in those programs and uh, we will need an, a third teacher um, at Flat Rock to accommodate that growth. So we've included that in the budget. We also have um, where it talks about investing in the community an additional FTE for better customer service as well as to meet new state and federal reporting guidelines. That's an FTE in our finance department uh, to in, um, handle some of these increased requirements that we have for ESSA requirements for the federal government and some of the new state accountability measures we're finding more and more requirements that are taxing the current staff that we have. Um, so we have an additional FTE for that proposed. Um, we have some stipends. Um, the board made a commitment last spring to add JV lacrosse at the high school level, both boys and girls. So those are those stipends, as well as a weight room stipend. Um, the high school is looking to expand its weight room facility um, by um, knocking out some walls and increasing some space for um, all of our athletes to do conditioning and weight training, and this would be an additional stipend to man that expanded weight room. And then we have one other um, FTE, and that is one that would um, um, free up our uh, lead teachers in special ed to provide some more behavior support for teachers, students, and families, and also to increase social emotional learning, which is a big part of our goal for culture and well being. So those are kind of where we've tied our. Um, priorities to our strategic plan and the basis of almost all of the increases that we have um, and why we have identified them as priorities. We're happy to answer any questions that you have around those. Questions from the board? I do, Mr. Chairman. Ms. Zemel. Uh, could you explain that again, the, the last one, the, the increased social emotional learning as far as so we're going to add one more staff member? Right. So we're going to add one. The plan is to add a, a, a staff member that would be a lead teacher for special education that would take over all private day placements, um, testing, um, or certain aspects of testing, working with the county, with the FAPT committee, 
so that it would free up more time for the lead teachers that are actually in the yes, schools to because they're doing that type of work now which is administrative work oh, okay. um, and that would allow those teachers to work with um, students that have behavior issues uh, we're seeing a lot of that especially uh -huh. at the elementary level uh -huh. uh, provide training for teachers but also do some more social and emotional learning uh -huh. um, at the elementary middle and high school level because they would be freed up of that demand that's currently taking a lot of their time okay thank you mm -hmm. but, uh, Mr. Mr. <coughs> what has come of the counselor mandate from the general assembly is that kind of been put on hold and put on the back burner yeah it's kind of been put on hold on the back burner right now we're still waiting for the final um, version of the budget there could be a um, a reinsertion of that but at this point it's a phase in and there's nothing required at this time for us to do uh, but we're keeping an eye on that and may have to make an adjustment based on the final version of the budget is that in either the house or the senate versions i don't know specifically I don't think it's in either one specifically. I think it's been pulled out of both. That was part of the governor's budget, and that's why that's part of the delta yeah, between the House and the Senate. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. Right. <laughs> I, th I think it's certainly something that we will take a look at, and uh, we did add a counselor this year, um, a half-time counselor this year, to provide extra support at Pocahontas Elementary, um, and we'll continue to look at that. Okay. Goal three, investing in the community, that, that one FT, what type of employee is that, what classification? Well, we're still working on that as part of the balancing the budget. What we, um, what our goal would be is that it would be an assistant director position um, at um, Central Office in Finance to provide some support for Mr. Johns and his staff um, and um, do all this extra work that's now being required of us. Yeah, I noticed in the bills that you had sent that there was a lot of paper reporting or pay, um, that that they're expecting. Right. Yeah, the, the requirements of what we now have to do, um, Mr. John spends most of um, September working on what's called the annual school report, which is a huge report. Mm -hmm. uh, it already took three weeks of time, Mr. John's probably. Um, and now with the new federal requirements, we have to go back and tag every dollar to a specific location, a specific school, a specific program. And what we've heard from the DOE in several presentations that that time's gonna double um, to get that report done. So um, it's just right now, Larry's been doing it all, mm -hmm. uh, but it's just not feasible mm -hmm. to do anymore, especially when he's supervising transportation mm -hmm. um, and mm -hmm. several other departments. Um, for him to take that much time, it's just become more and more of a burden. Sure. All right, other questions or comments? One, one comment, Mr. Mr. Chairman. Um, <clears throat> under, I, I thought Dr. Omohundro's summary of, of the accomplishments and the way they align with the strategic plan was terrific. And I, and I often say, you know, we need to do more to make sure our public is aware of this. Uh, you know, especially that, that second slide where you've got personalized learning and you've got a, a bunch of different things noted on there I, I think that would be a great banner page or a great page on our website somewhere possibly with some live links to what some of those things are i, I know that's worked for somebody but i but i think it's you know it, it's a great summary page you know you've got new courses in, the, you know the hybrid course with a link just to with a picture of that hybrid course and what it looks like and you know the launch capstone course you know what is you know it's you know that's a NASA collaboration I, I think that's great information for our public to know and I don't know that they would capture it by just seeing this seeing this slide right here so it's, it's a suggestion because I think it would really highlight the good things that our division does okay. good suggestion we'll work on that all right other questions or comments all right, Dr. Jones. That's all we had right now. We'll um, continue to keep you updated on the budget. As I said, I'll send this presentation out to staff so they're informed uh, first thing in the morning, um, as well as some additional information. And we will um, work to bring you back a balanced budget at the next meeting. All right, thank you, sir. Excuse me, Mr. Chairman. Mrs. Emel. Um, I'm sorry, I thought we were gonna come to these other pages of the budget. I. Um, 
I'm, I'm oh. the um, oh, we're happy analysis. To do that. Okay, is that okay? Yeah, I, I had a couple of questions Which on that. Which one were you looking at? The first one. The revenue uh, and expenditure summary. Yes. Okay. Uh -huh. um, down at the bottom, mm -hmm. it says about um, it includes a thirty-five thousand transfer to the food service unit. Now, explain to me because I, I, for Sodexo is doing all that, right. but what is this money for? So we still have a, a part-time employee right. that has to do all the federal and state reporting of the programs, um, and so that is funding for that individual, right, Mr. John? Uh, or am yes, I speaking sir. out of turn? Uh, no, it, it is that, but it is also um, the contract that we have with Sodexo this year had um, guaranteed that we would only have a loss of about $10,000. Right. And so in this fiscal year, we had made the transfer uh, 20,000 and that is because uh, the contract also was based upon no more than three days for snow and or inclement weather we've gone past that so uh, you know we most likely that $20,000 is used up by the time we get to the end of this year and do the analysis and um, so we have not yet negotiated the extended renewal for next year but I think it is prudent to have more dollars in there for potential snow days, and that's why it's increased to the, from 20 to 35. Uh, you lost me there. <coughs> you, when, it's, when it's a snow day, we're supposed to still pay them? Well, if it's a snow day, they can't have sales and therefore make the income that they have um, Proposed that so when, when we negotiated we the con this? Oh, yeah, when okay. we negotiated the contract and its standard okay. and language uh -huh. in these uh -huh. contracts, we agreed upon three days okay. of kind of a grace period. Uh -huh. But anything over three days, we would pay them a certain amount uh, for lost revenue. So okay. um, yeah, we knew that going in. It was part of the contract. Okay, so that's what this line item, line item is about. Or I'm not line item. The transfer is about. It's not the. It's not the employee. Because well, surely the employee doesn't make 15000 do they? Uh, no. It, the, only a portion of the employee is being charged to food service. Um, oh. and, and also, by the way, all of the uh, vendors that proposed to us had that three-day clause in their contract okay. because, uh, you know, we will lose some days for inclement weather. And okay. so... Um, <coughs> That is a number that, uh, you know, it may or may not be that. As I'm looking and projecting at where um, Sodexo is doing right now, they have made a good improvement over what we were doing internally. Uh, but I still don't see by the time we get to June 30th, they still won't be in the black. So uh, I'm not sure if they're going to be in the black next year, but they're going to be a lot closer. And so. We may or we may not need that uh, 35, but mm -hmm. it's prudent to put it in there because um, at this time I don't know. Okay. And if it ends up being less than that, we just trans we don't transfer it. Yeah, that's correct. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Well, thank you because I, I just mm -hmm. wanted to Good know question. what that transfer was all about. Um, and then the um, line items, I just wanted to say um, or ask, I, I noticed on slide three, um, I, I wanted to make sure that there were more reading book sets. D does that come under textbooks when it says textbooks? Because I, I just want to make sure that with the elementary realignment that we've given enough books. I know that that was a concern with the TAC committee for, okay. from some of the Dr. teachers. Dr. Hummer, um, Hundra, you want to tackle that? Dr. Thomas has been working with the uh, reading coaches at each of the schools to make sure that we are evaluating the inventory that we have within the schools mm -hmm. and then sending books to the, the locations where they're needed. Um, but if there is additional need, we have money within the instructional budget to do that. It's not necessarily always going to be at the school level, so sometimes we have money at the, at the division level too. So I can show you those line items and pull those for Dr. Oh. Jones to share those with you. Okay. Thank you. Yes. All right. Other questions or comments? All right. Okay. Our next presentation um, is one that the uh, board had requested, and that was a uh, presentation on flexible seating, um, how it's being implemented and the impact of it. Um, I think Dr. Amandro is going to come up and... It's going to show that it's going to take about 11 minutes. It's only 7, I promise. 
Okay. She's got a presentation for you on flexible seating, a video that she um, and some others created that we can't wait to see. Thank you. 
That was wonderful. Yeah, that was very really good. good job. <clears throat> yes, it was a good job. All right, Dr. Yeah. Jones, Dr. Omohundra, you want to offer any comments? Well, I'll, I'll just say that, um, you know, certainly uh, Powhatan Middle School is where we've been <coughs> most purposeful about this work because we had that opportunity. Um, but I do want to applaud our elementary teachers. I think they've really stepped up in terms of transforming their own classrooms through yard sales, goodwill, friends, neighbors, and other things. We do have some money in the budget for um, increasing flexible seating in a more purposeful way. Um, and certainly the high school has the Learning Commons, ROTC, but as you walk around, you'll see they also have some um, furniture that was donated by Capital One or somebody um, out in the hallways that students are always using or teachers can take their kids out there. And um, they're um, another example of flexible seating. So. I think the benefits um, are very strong, and as long as the teacher feels comfortable with it, then we want to make sure that we can support them in um, increasing these opportunities for our students to have different learning environments that may be better suited to them. All right. So you, you talked about a lot of positives. Are there any negatives? Yeah, it's just the cost. Yeah, I was going to say. It's just the mind. cost. I mean, we made a purposeful decision in the middle school to um, that that was where our priority was, mm -hmm. and we spent mm -hmm. extra money on the furniture <laughs> over what you would normally spend. Mm -hmm. It's certainly cheaper to get mm -hmm. 28 or 30 desks and chairs, but, uh, you know, we thought it was important. We heard from the students and mm -hmm. the staff that it was important. So that's really the only drawback. Um, some people can be turned off when they go into classroom because it doesn't look like a traditional classroom. It's a little messier. Um, it can be a little noisier, but uh, I personally think that's a good thing because mm -hmm. the students are mm -hmm. active, they're engaged, they're, um, they're not just sitting and listening to one person speak all the time. Uh, so I see that as a positive, but I, I know some people who are more familiar with traditional classrooms may walk in and go, wow, this is different, but mm -hmm. um, I think it's a good different. All right, very good. Well, we do have regular chairs and, and oh, desks absolutely. for those yes. that want to just, you know, be more traditional, though, Correct. too, right? Right. Okay. In every classroom, mm -hmm. there's still uh -huh. regular chairs uh -huh. and desks for those. And, and as several of the people in the video said, some days that's what works for a kid. Mm -hmm. uh, but mm -hmm. some days they may need to sit on a hokey stool or exactly. bounce around on a yoga yeah. ball um, a little bit while they're working, and, uh -huh. and that's what works uh -huh. for them. Well, I am just so grateful that you took time and your staff took time to really um, study this and to and go with it and put the extra money there because I think that's the future and that keeps kids, I think that keeps kids out of trouble. Um, and also, I'd like to say, you know, what it reminded me of watching, you know, when you go in the doctor's office and they've got those national TVs and they have the national stories, you know, 
little clips like that would be good PR. You know, I, I don't know, maybe in the, in the office, the school's office, mm -hmm. if parents mm -hmm. have to wait in there, maybe yep. a small TV, when we have extra money, I guess. But my point is, is that it's, so, it's professionally done and it, it speaks about our school. I don't, can that go on the website? Sure. Because that, yeah, we I mean, if, if I was looking for a school system and I was moving here and I saw that, I, you know, and especially if I had an active child, I'd be all over the school system right away. Good point. So, we'll get it up on know? the website. So, all good right. job. Very good job. All right, good job. Other questions or comments? It, you know, what wasn't mentioned in here is how good this is for kids' fitness. And, and it, uh -huh. it, it is a... You know, there's a lot of research out there about core strength and students mm -hmm. having to you know, move a little bit in terms of their attentiveness and in terms of their attention and all those things. But you know, it's, it's good for kids' fitness. You think about, you know, we, we, we lament that kids are in front of screens so long, but this gives them an opportunity to be in front of a screen and move at the same time. Yeah. And I, I'm guessing there's some teachers there that like those standing desks too and, and like mm -hmm. that. So, yep. mm -hmm. so. All right. Great job. I appreciate that, mm -hmm. and it's good information for us to have. Thank, Thank you very you, much. Cole. Ms. Ayers? Um, if I can talk, I'm, I'm having a hard time up here. Um, Ms. Emal and I went to the middle school, and we witnessed some of the kids oh. using mm -hmm. in the classroom um, all of the things, and they were nice enough to offer me one of the hokey stools, and I'm like, well, did I have a dress on? It's probably not a good idea, because I could see me sitting on it and falling on the floor. I was like, not today, but I will try it the next time. So it was good just to see the kids using it, and it was it was like second nature. I mean, they, it was just like sitting in a regular chair, and, and so um, I was really impressed with that, too, actually seeing the kids in action. Yeah. All right, thank you, Ms. Ayers. Other comments, questions? Oh, All right. is our next meeting still going to be at the middle school? I, yeah. It said on the, it, we had talked at one time that we would like to have, instead of the regular tables, the, the sit and stand desks Option. and maybe some stools or whatever so okay. that, you know, we can, the public can see us if we can get some pictures from Powhatan today or, and also on our website that, you know, we're not just the traditional school board, that we are up on the times of what's happening. We're progressive. Progressive. There you go. All right. <laughs> that's right. Oh, come on now, Mr. Our HR Chairman. Department is shuttering. Yeah, that's exactly right. All right, Ms. for Ms. those of us that would like to. <laughs> yes, we'll provide that option. Thank you. Yeah, see, there you go. You can be the traditional, and we can be the more progressive. Okay, thank you. All right, Ms. Emil, I'm going to ask you in a moment, if you wouldn't mind, to uh, make the motion regarding closed session. Okay. But I just do want to conclude what we said. Thank you for the presentation. It was very well done. Ni nicely done presentation. And Mr. Johns, thank you for the, uh, and Dr. Jones and Ms. Dr. Omohundro, thank you for the, uh, I guess, the preview on what's coming with our budget. So I know that there's a lot of work yet to be done on that. But uh, we appreciate the early information and Absolutely. anything you can share with us. So thank you very much. Ms. Ready? Okay. I recommend and make a motion to enter into closed session pursuant to code 2.2-3711. A1, to discuss the employment, resignation, and leave of specific employees. And pursuant to code 2.2-3711A2 and A4, to discuss the expulsion and school placement of specific students. Codes 2.2-3711A1, A2, and A4. So we have a motion. Is there a second? A second. Motion is second. All in favor of entering into closed session, please respond with aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries 5-0. We are in closed session.